Hello. So I wasn't exactly planning on doing another insight today, but the Dorabella from Mozart's Cosi Van Tutte has been in the back of, like on the back burner of the stove of my mind on a gentle simmer. And I didn't expect her to come boiling over today, but I was in the kitchen a little while ago doing something involving food like you do. And um, the smart speaker was playing the classical music station. And uh, they were playing an aria from Berlioz's Beatrice and Benedict. Beatrice is a mezzo-soprano role. And uh, why this aria inspired me to come here and talk to you about Dorabella is, uh, will be made clear, but Beatrice is going through something that Dorabella never even thought of. Okay, so first things we got to do always is begin at the beginning, which is connection. Who is this person. And by now, if you've been watching or reading um, my insights, you know that um, while I have a pretty elastic imagination, that imagination is used to fill in the blanks from the material that is on the page. And if you're not looking for the details of the characters in what they say and what they do, you're looking in the wrong place. All right, so what I get from Dorabella First of all, I know the situation is she's engaged to be married and the opera, as far as she's concerned, is about her experiences with love. Okay, so 19th century opera, all right, 19th century society, uh, what I see is, first of all, Despina describes them as, uh, the notary, as um, these ladies from Ferrara. Well, Ferrara is... Uh, town that is a little bit south of Venice, which is very northern Italy. And uh, they say at one point about their fiancés that they've left Naples. So the opera takes place in Naples, and these girls are from Ferrara. So putting that together, I get the idea that Dorabella is marriageable age, which would make her 18, 19, 20 at the most, uh, that they don't come from where they are, and Naples is a seacoast town, so I figure they're wintering in Naples, and this is probably where Fiori Ligi met Guglielmo. And uh, the line from Follies, honey, could you find a friend for my friend, occurs to me, because the way Adorabella reacts and interreacts with Ferrando is very different than the way Fiori Ligi reacts and interacts with Guglielmo. Uh, I see that they um, have one lady's maid. Um, there don't seem to be an awful lot of other servants present unless the director is using people in the chorus to be servants, but the focus is on this one lady's maid. And that tells me that, oh, and there aren't any parents in the picture, which means, as far as I'm concerned, they're probably vacationing, wintering, as I said, in Naples. They brought their lady's maid along, sort of, you know, bare minimum. The lady's maid complains about having to make chocolate, uh, hot chocolate for breakfast and serving it, which would not be the duty of a lady's maid. So I get the idea that Despina is kind of their, uh, their go-to servant on this trip. All right. So there's money. Uh, there's position. Uh, the men that they're engaged to are soldiers in the army, but they behave not like foot soldiers or even Belcore, who is a sergeant in Elysia d'Amour, but they behave more like ent entitled officers and gentlemen. I get the idea that they're, these all four of them are upper class people. And the opera, for me, which many people don't like, I think simply because they don't get it, um, is an opera as, as fine and as close an examination of human behavior that I have seen in practically any other opera, certainly none that comes to mind at the moment. Because these four people, Fiori Ligi, Dorabella, Guglielmo, Ferrando, seem to have absolutely no idea who the other person is, or for that matter, who they are, and what the nature of a relationship is. Look, the uh, men 
are arrogant enough to claim that their girlfriends, let's call them fiancés, because Dorabella and Shirdi Liji do a little palm reading and they discover M and P in uh, Dorabella's palm might mean matrimonio presto, marriage pretty soon. Uh, the, the, the four of them are engaged to be married to each other, but the men claim that their fiancés uh, wouldn't dream of looking at another man. Um, and as a matter of fact, her first line in the opera, Ferrandra is saying, la mia dorabella capace non è. It, she is not capable of being anything other than faithful to him. That's what he believes, and it's based on what they want to believe. And that's what the opera is about, debunking the idea of what you want to believe about somebody else and what you want to believe about yourself is not necessarily the truth and certainly not as far as you should go in a serious love relationship. So the men take this bet from Don Alfonso, who seems to function in this kind of mentoring quality of taking care of them. I really do think um, that he is far from being a, a cynic and um, a misogynist. I really do think something like what's going on in the realm of magic flute is, is that these men are going to be forced to look at the women as individuals and not as stereotypical, archetypical women as I want to believe women ought to be. The same with Dorabella. Dorabella pretty much echoes her sister throughout the entire first act never seems to have an original thought of her own. Either Fiordiligi starts the idea like with the Guarda Sorella duet and Dorabella goes along with it, or else she just echoes her sister's line a third below Fiordiligi's vocal line. She doesn't ever seem to have an original thought on her own. As a matter of fact, when uh, the men leave for this battle that neither one of the girls seem to be aware that the country isn't at war and that there isn't any battle for the men to go off to. The two of them react in such a, well, in my opinion, narcissistic, self-involved way. Okay, Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing. Sorry, that's the play that Beatrice and Benedict was based upon. Beatrice sings an aria about remembering, il m'en souvient, you mezzo-sopranos may know it, that the day that Benedict went off to battle, she laughed, um, she didn't take it seriously, but that night in bed she had these horrible dreams of the enemy triumphing and howling with delight and not knowing where Benedict was, and she woke up and she realized, oh my God, I do care about him. I do love him. Smanye Implacabile is not that aria. This is not an aria about a girl being concerned about what will happen to her fiancé when he goes out onto this mythical battlefield. It's all about how she feels, how she wants to be alone, how she hates the air that she breathes, how she hates herself. There isn't ever not, not at all from Dorabella, any concern whatsoever about Ferrando. The only interest that she seems to take in a member of the opposite sex is when the men show up disguised, all right? And when you wear a disguise, well, if you remember from wearing a costume or people who aren't in theater know about how Halloween is such a popular holiday in this country, because when you put on a costume, you don't have to be yourself anymore. And the men are infinitely more interesting when they're costumed and mustached than they are when they're military officers going off to a mythical battle, convinced that their girls will remain faithful to them for no other reason than that's what they said that they would do. Smanye which translates in a number of different ways, but the one that I found most uh, suitable was uh, implacable yearnings, all right? Smanye can be ravings, but I think it's the idea of what it is that she wants that is implacable, which is to suffer until she dies.
all of which is hyperbole. When the men show up costumed, they really disturb the girls, especially when the men take poison. Then the girls become quite concerned about them. They uh, 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 show a level of compassion and concern that they haven't evidenced for their own fiancés at all. This leads to the opening of Act Two, when everything starts to turn around. Dora Bella starts taking the lead. When Despina explains in Una Donna Quindiciani that any girl who's 15 years old would know how to behave in a relationship with a man, Dora Bella starts with Purity Ligi asking, would it be possible that we could just have a good time with these two guys while our fiancés are away? Nobody need know anything about it. Despina herself said that she would say that they were friends of hers. Anything to keep from dying of melancholy, she, ha she says. Fiordilici says, your conscience is way too elastic, but tell me specifically so that we understand each other very well, which of these two Narcissus, which of these two guys do you prefer? And Dora Bella launches with Io Gia de Ciso, I've already decided. And even without any orchestral introduction, even before the orchestra seems to be ready, she starts Prenderò quel brunettino. We get to what's called the heart duet, and I think we really get to the heart of Dorabella, because in this scene, for the first time, love hasn't come to her. As I said, honey, could you maybe find a friend for my friend? I swear, I Guglielmo and Fiordiligi thought, you know, Ferrando and Dorabella would be a great pair, and Dorabella and Fernando seem to go along with it. She opts for choosing the other suitor, not that either one of them knows that these are the same men, Switch. switching is not Don Alfonso's idea, it's not the men's idea, it's not Despina's idea, it's Dorabella's idea. And in the heart duet, where she is so fragile about interesting this man in being alone with her, she actually moves Guglielmo to do something that I don't think that he's ever had to or needed to do with Fiordiligi, he has to take care of her. Just to test her a little bit, he produces out of nowhere, it seems to be a heart piece of jewelry, like a locket or a bracelet or something. And he asks her if she'll accept it just to see if he can tempt her into saying no and remaining faithful or yes, which I think is his own male ego taking over. And is very surprised, La Cetai, he says, you're going to accept it. And this causes Dorabella to freak out. Crudele, she says to him, you're teasing my heart. And he has to take her. And I always feel it's like I'm trying to calm down an agitated bird that's fluttering around in his hands. He has to soothe her. Il core vidono, that duet is so vulnerable, so fragile, so gentle. It's so something that Guglielmo has never experienced before. And Dorabella, I think, has never had this kind of concern from Ferrando, who I think is more inclined to feel completely secure about his relationship of love with Dorabella and sing Un Aura Amoroso, which is an aria about being in love. From then on, Dorabella, there's no going back. As a matter of fact, she says to her sister, it would be better if you gave in. When those men have been burned so badly by this lie that they have perpetuated on these two unsuspecting girls, when they see what it is that they have done with their arrogant boasts of my fiancé could never look at another man, they come back as soldiers. They drop their disguises, and there is absolutely no question in my mind whatsoever that they go back to their original partner. They were not really married. There was no real ceremony. Despina is really not a notary. Fiordiligi, I think, 
That's another insight, but I think she's tremendously relieved when Guglielmo comes back to her. For Dorabella, I feel that she realizes that she fell in love with a man in a costume who doesn't exist and that she is really going to, what does Ron Weasley say? She's really going to have to sort out her priorities. When the curtain falls, I don't know what will become of these four people, but I really do believe that all four of them have woken up to what love and what self-love really are. And it's going to be a question of starting from scratch all over again to see where it goes. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rather spur of the moment inspired insight. Um, uh, definitely hit subscribe. Uh, definitely leave a comment. That would be very, very helpful. And um, come see me on my website, which is listed below. Uh, pay a visit, uh, maybe set up a coaching would be fun to do a coaching over Skype or FaceTime with you. Take care. I look forward to seeing you again.